Okay, this is a closed cast on for a one by one rib, and it's adapted from the uh, knitting, the flatbed knitting machine version. I've removed every other needle from my machine, starting with needle number two, and I'm going to go ahead and hang my um, bonnet on all of the, the remaining needles because I have 30 loops on my, bo uh, my bonnet so I have 30 needles left. So I'm going to go ahead and cast on to these remaining needles. And I'm going to cast on with waste yarn. So I'll be right back. Okay, I've knit a few rounds of waste yarn on every other needle or the um, the needles that I have in here. There's they are every other needle. Every other slot is empty. So I'm going to load my main yarn and um, knit two complete rounds. Get rid of this waste yarn. That's one. And two. And as I begin the third round, I'm going to um, start hanging that bottom loop on, on some needles. And um, I have to start putting needles back in. But uh, what I'm going to do is take this loop here that um, it falls in that empty spot right there and if I'm clear of my cams I can go ahead and put needles in. Normally I wait till, um, let me wait till it comes around so I can start on that second needle. Alright, I can get to them a little bit better but I can't see as well from this side. So what you want to do is take this bottom loop that falls at the very, very bottom. And what that's gonna do is lock the adjacent columns in so they don't ravel when you uh, take this off the machine. I like to work from the opposite side so I can see better so I don't have to lean over into the machine. And the handle is going to kind of be in my way right there. And it's easier for me from the opposite side to see if I've missed any needles. This is, I'm only doing this because of the camera, but I'm normally working on that side. But you can do it anyway. As long as you get those, every needle needs to have a loop on it, and every slot has to have the needles put back in. And I'm hoping that I'm not missing any. I'm trying to keep my eye over here to watch out. And these are going to start knitting over here right away.
no needle there. Now I'm going to knit the number of rows that I want on my rib. I'm just going to do a few. I'm not really counting, so here's my number one needle. As it comes around this side, I'm going to start dropping off stitches, starting with the second needle and then every other needle. So what you do is you take this bottom, let me go ahead and just drop those stitches off all the way down. And then this one's a little loose because it's tied to that, it's connected to that tail. So I'll take this bottom loop here and I'll reach under skip to since there's no tension on it it's a little bit tricky on these first couple so what I want to do is grab that fourth bar up from the bottom one two three four I'm going under the bottom trying to get my latch up there and just latch all the way up like you normally do for a rib and then hang it on the needle. And then you move on to the next needle that you want to drop. Too much stuff on my table. Same thing, you drop it all the way off. Go under that bottom one and come up with your latch and grab that fourth one up. Sometimes I have to push my, my um, fabric toward me so I can make a little room in there. I try to watch the latch to see where the latch is to make it come up through the right hole. And this will only work with the one by one because we've taking out the, the needles necessary to lock these stitches in. I would use an E-wrap or something like that if you're going to do a different rib combination. Get my latch to come up through the right hole. And I'm going to continue around like this and then take it off the machine and show you what the finished edge looks like. So let me continue around dropping every other column of stitches. Last one.
and you can do as many rows of rib as you want. I usually work in small sections of six to ten rows at a time. But for this sample, I'm just going to go ahead and knit several rows plain. And then I'll knock it off of the machine. I'll cut my yarn and take it off and cut away my um, waste yarn so that we can look at this edge. Now, as you can see, it doesn't ravel when you take it off the machine. But you do have a little bit of a bumpy edge. But, uh, of course, your sock is going to be uh, bigger than that. But you just start shaping your ribbing and, um, and block your sock. And all of that will start straightening up as you kind of shape the yarn. And you can also start at um, the end that has the tail on it. And you can start um, pulling those stitches in if you want to do it that way. So if you just slightly tug on those as you go around, it will um, straighten those bumps out a little bit. You just don't want to do it too much because then you'll lose that, um, that stretch to get the sock on. But um, it's a quick and easy uh, cast on for a one by one rib and um, it, it looks nice. See, it actually, this tail is sort of a, a drawstring. Sometimes I'll just draw it out and then just straighten it back out again. And then block that and then you'll weave in this tail here at the end. So there's another closed edge cast on.